In the recent years, we witnessed a significant increase in the concern among the students that we need more resources to thrive amongst the other prestigious universities of the world. This building represents meeting the concerns of the students. Through a joint effort, we will have the ability to reach our fundamental goal. In this sense, I consider the grand opening as a testament that we now have all the up-to-date technology to help us grow and reach higher goals here at Craig and &M. I trust students in the coming years realize that we can compete with any other program, and with the finishing of this amazing building, we have the capacity to reach higher limits of academic excellence. I want to take this moment to introduce a colleague of the school, Mar Maribel Villarreal. Heaven, thank you for this new day that you have given us. Today, as we gather to celebrate the grand opening of the Fabrication Center and officially welcome it to our campus facilities, we recognize that the earth is the Lord's. Everything in it is a gift of your creation for you founded and established our world. We ask your blessings on all in attendance and most especially over all that made this idea born of student desires a reality. Therefore, we humbly pray that all that takes place in the center would honor you, Lord. We ask you to bless this facility and protect all who are employed here, as well as all these students who come to use it from, from this day forward. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. I would like to now introduce a student who is fundamentally helping make Caribbean a better place for all students, Mr. Irvin Bryant, the student regent for the Texas a and University System Board of Regents. Uh, my name is Irvin Bryant. I am a fourth year history major uh, here at Caribbean A&M University, a uh, proud member of the Honors Program, and that is relates to our proceedings this morning, I am the student regent to the Board of Regents appointed by Governor Greg Abbott. So on behalf of the Texas A&M University System, I'd like to welcome you to this auspicious occasion. But in particular, I'd like to welcome everyone, especially those uh, who are working with students here, to uh, the university campus that we call The Hill, Caribbean A&M University. Uh, we're excited to afford you a glimpse into the resources that we have here as what is uh, called in the Texas State Constitution a institution of the first class. Today we are celebrating a new fabrication center of our award-winning architecture school. Now, this facility, like the rest of Caribbean and m University, will inspire students for generations to come. So as we build great things in this building, we are continuing to build students across our campus. Uh, now I would like to introduce the architect of uh, much of our growth and excitement here on campus, University President Ruth J. Simmons. very verbose, and so we get to the point quickly. Right? right. <laughs> okay, so. Um, I've never, Irvin, I've never been called an architect before. <laughs> I like the sound of that, even if it's not true. I mean, I love the <laughs> architect. Uh, so again, good morning, everybody. Good morning. I think the weather today belies the fact uh, that this is truly a joyous occasion. And why would it not be? We celebrate the continuing excellence of architecture at Prairie View, a program that is exceptional in so many ways, 
according to the most recent accreditation report. You know, one of the things that I have to do as president is I have to listen to the good, the bad, and the ugly all the time. And so you get teams of people who come into the university to tell us how well we're doing or how poorly we're doing. And one of the more most glorious sessions like that that I've been privileged to be a part of was the report of the uh, team uh, visiting architecture and telling us what they thought of this program. And it couldn't have been more glorious. I was so proud, I remain proud of that. We celebrate an idea made manifest in this wonderful structure. Because what is a university if not only the advancement of ideas, but also the doing that enables those ideas to advance to the benefit of society. Love the idea, the manifestation of what ideas can bring to us. We celebrate the fact that ideas arise from a community of students, scholars, experts, educators, and the fact that an individual, an individual, Emma, is empowered to advance ideas to the advantage of scholarship and teaching. Not only that they are empowered to do that, but that somewhere someone is actually listening. And finally, we celebrate the advancement of our university for in an opening such as this, it is again evident that the university remains a vibrant enterprise, ever evolving at the cutting edge, ever improving to the benefit of our students. We are so proud of them. Thank you for being wonderful. I hope people are not offended by this. I'm alumni, community members, faculty, and so forth. Whenever I get a question about the university, and people ask, well, what is it really like? I always say, our students set the standard. They are wonderful. They make us so proud. I mean, not always, but <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> they make us so proud. So thank you for coming today. On behalf of the university, I welcome you warmly to this occasion. Thank you.
standing in front of the best, mm. the largest, the most fantastic fabrication center far and away above all those other architecture schools. In fact, <laughs>
a vessel embarked upon the business of improving the life chances of those for whom opportunities had been greatly denied. You look at the Kennedy Building, the Nathan Arthur Kennedy Building, and you sense a shift, the imagery, you sense the movement, you sense the power, you sense the rhythm. This fabrication center echoes that same spirit, and you can feel the rhythm of a ship on a journey to deliver on the promises of life, of liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I don't have to tell the people in this audience the story. You know the story. You know that this institution was a ship that faced ferocious winds, rains, storms, along its way of 143 years. But you know, the rock was way down in the sea. You can't see it. The captain, Dr. Simmons, can't see it. But she has, like those principals and presidents and leaders and back and staff before her, the faith. You have to believe that it has the strength to be able to hold the anchor. I need not recount our story, but our story is the American story. The story of this little place, starting with those eight students. You see, the story of the little school founded is really now, it's a, it's a victory. Behold the victory. You see, the story of the, the, the indispensable rock of faith the essential anchor of hope, critical, but more important than anything, the chain. If it erodes, a corrodes, the ship and the anchor, they separate, Dr. Price. This fabrication center is proof that successive generations have formed an invincible chain. I'm deeply grateful to the past leadership to Dr. Wright, to Dr. Savoni, to the School of Architecture, to all who had a hand in making this dream, which as Sam would say, a dream not realized really becomes a disaster, a nightmare. I said to him many days, when he would just go on and on, I said, it's a nice idea, it's a wonderful dream, but it's just not realistic. It's not in our facilities plan. I'm the provost, I would know. <laughs> I said, but don't become an agitator. No, I'm an agitator. He looked at me and Denzel and he said, the last time I checked, if you don't have an agitator, you don't get the clothes clean. It's clean, it's beautiful, it's functional, it's state of the art. So much for agitation and agitators. <laughs> I want to thank the friends and family members who have contributed to the scholarship in Sam's honor. I thank you, Dr. Simmons, for your, your, your amazing decisions, two of which are just phenomenal. First, for ensuring that the Fabrication Center was first in quality and in safety before it opened, and for officially making the Sam I. Smith Construction Science and Architecture Scholarship an endowed scholarship that is today over $50,000. And I was walking in, uh, it's Carmen Williams, and I had a nice size check here from Easy Enterprises. Uh, the Arnett Easley, the China Chapel family at this church, and from the Lewis Easley family. So get these from me. I know Connie will do that. According to folks in this room, a whole lot of folk, we're going to be at $100,000, and they say it's not going to take us many months, Dr. Simmons, and we're going to keep on going. <laughs> Professor Price 
Pen words I excerpted from the larger piece that captures the essence of a link in this chain. Still thinking of Mr. Smith. Hours of conversation in the shop, in the canyon, in the studio. Always willing to help the students, me, others, in the canyon, talking with Mr. Smith. He gives the input, fabrication center, fabrication center, fabrication center. <laughs> Agrees to come to the studio the next day to review the progress with the design. Two students pass in the hallway. Expertise overheard. Low pants visible. Mid conversation, Mr. Smith turns, takes off at the students, stops the students, talks to the students, a lesson others see, others hear because he could be loud. <laughs> Mr. Smith returns, students first, students first. Mr. Smith, your thoughts are with me, says Professor Price. Your heart is with me, and I, a better teacher, a better person. Thank you, Professor Price. At Purdue a University today, the brightest sun in the southwestern sky, the Fabrication Center, students first, sail on. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 